Today we have yet another 6 incredible builds for you in Remnant 2. This is not really your typical video however as I did not create any of these builds. All 6 were created by you members of the community, specifically members of my channel. Each was posted to me and I tried them out against about 3 bosses each. Surprisingly, there are some really darn good and powerful builds here. So let's get into this and check out all the cool builds. Be aware all of the mutators, relic fragments, and concoctions are going to be shown for each build for your reference. Build number one is called Mr. Nightmare. This is a nightfall build that deals very high crit and weak spot damage. We've got the Salvage Tart for a fast and powerful heal, Nightweaver's Grudge to grant haste and 20% more crit chance, Atonement Fold to activate that amulet's buff all the time with plus 10% crit chance, Probability Core for 30% crit damage, and Zany's Malice for weak spot damage, with Burden of the Destroyer to boost all damage. The idea here is to use Hunter's second skill as much as possible. This requires aiming down sights for a couple of seconds before firing to get a large boost of damage and basically no recoil whatsoever. The gun never sways at all and when it's mods active you just hold it down as long as possible. Not a particularly tanky build by any means but you have incredible damage and I do think the Nightfall needs the Gunslinger class to function well giving this a nice feel overall. I also think replacing Burden of Destroyer with Feyren Sigil isn't that bad of an idea since Nightfall Falls mod is the best feature on it, but either way it could deal with Apocalypse very well. Build number 2 is called the Hidden Wraith. This is an awesome build that keeps you untouchable and invisible for most of the game. We use Shroud on Hunter to be invisible and Void Cloak on Invader to get an auto dodge when needed. The Tranquil Heart is there since we won't really be getting hit at all and any chip damage can be healed up quickly. The Void Idol greatly increases the reload speed of Spore Bloom making it much more usable and really helps use less ammo on the Bolt Driver. Burden of the Stargazer grants 15% skill cooldown, Burden of the Rebel grants 15% skill cooldown, Black Pawn Stamp grants 10% skill cooldown, and the Dole Steel Ring decreases your dodge weight by one class. This all culminates to give you max skill cooldown and a very light dodge, so you can use Spore Bloom's incredible damage to make up for your lack of damage rings, and it feels very easy and quick to use here. Both Shroud and Void Cloak can be used as much as you like to both avoid hits or take them and really not care too much. Then you have the Dull Steel Ring which is just genius, giving you enough defense to not get one shot but also granting you the lightest dodge. I think most of us usually play with armor so we forget how good that light dodge really is. If that's the case for you then you need to try this build. It's super easy to avoid damage and spam dodging is actually easy to do without running out of stamina. Most of the skill cooldown builds lack damage heavily, but this one still puts in work while giving you near infinite use of your good abilities. Also, the bandit armor is a favorite of mine and the pants look fantastic here. Excellent build, I would definitely recommend for sure. Build number 3 is called the Bloodsucker. This is probably the best build I've tried from the community thus far. We've got again the Tranquil Heart for a fast heal without taking the relic itself. Whispering Marble grants both good damage and defense so you can tank and get out DPS. Band of Fanatic increases your bleed damage by a lot, Dried Clay Ring pairs nicely with the Amulet to give you 4 Bulwark and a large damage boost. Ahane Crystal is the best damage boost you can get since we are running multiple statuses, and the Red Ring of Death will double the application of bleed from Merciless, granting up to 3 stacks of bleed in total. Since we're running Alchemist, we get 4 total concoctions, and Challenger makes you tanky by, well, its passives alone making you a walking force of nature who will never just die all of a sudden from basic attacks. You can even take some heavy damage here and there and keep on going. Then there's the damage. We're increasing bleed by a lot here with the use of Corrosion, the Corrupted Rune Pistol, and the Egg Amulet. So your range damage is good, mods are good, and bleed is good. And uh, which gun has all that by default? You guessed it, Merciless. This gun is extremely good for damage all around allowing you to use any of the three damage sources depending on the situation. And the whole time statuses will be whittling down enemies as you play. You've got to try this one to believe it, as Bleed is currently working a bit incorrectly and is weaker than any other status in the game, yet this build is still incredible. Wait until Bleed is fixed, that's all I'm saying guys. Build number 4 is called the Battered King. This is a almost max tank build at about 79% DR while wearing red royal armor. We've got the Shielded Heart as we're going to use Lifesteal to get our health back and the shield makes it really hard to die from even the strongest attacks. 
Brewmaster's Cork with Alchemist grants up to 7 total concoctions, meaning you can not only gain massive damage reduction from them, but many more stats and buffs as well. Atonement Fold bleeds you and increases crit chance. The Alchemy Stone grants you good lifesteal because we're bleeding. The Hardcore Metal Band grants the max of 5 bulwarks since we're still bleeding. And we also have the Sapphire Dreamstone for some skill cooldown when we're going to hit crit. With this build, we've got Enigma to deal with any of the smaller enemies quickly, and your two skills grant your main sources of damage. The Sapphire Dreamstone keeps them coming back quickly, and you can take basically every other attack and not worry about it at all. You're very, very tanky, yet still have a medium dodge roll. The Bulldog is also a favorite weapon of mine that has top-notch stagger. Using it keeps enemies at bay, and it's very easy to hit weak spots with that large reticle. You can use this in solo or in co-op to great effect, and use almost any of the concoctions that you want. It's not going to deal the most damage in the game, but it is a very, very well-rounded build and has a lot going for it. Also, the high DR with lifesteal means that as long as you're dealing damage, you are in the clear. So the Black Maw Auto Rifle also performs nicely here as well. Build number 5 is called the Man of Science. I will be honest, this one deals really low damage, but you could have a lot of fun here. Using Ritualist and Invader, we're going to spam the Small Sigil Punch skill and Void Cloak. Tranquil Heart being a favorite today for healing over time. Legacy Protocol granting decreased skill cooldown and increased skill duration. Burden of the Rebel decreasing skill cooldown by 15%. Black Pawn Stamp decreasing skill cooldown by 10%. Burden of the Destroyer boosting all damage by 15%. And Stone of Malevolence means we get our mods back quickly. The idea is to apply as many statuses as you can with your melee and guns. Then use the Eruption skill to tick away health. The Void Cloak is once again used to give you free death hits all the time, and in dungeons, this isn't too bad, as long as you can get statuses on the enemy. It's going to be more fun than anything in co-op where you have someone running Miasma to get those statuses on there, but I did really enjoy this against Fei Lin even when solo. The orbs that he spawns in were super easy to destroy as one use of the skill popped them all using status. The damage, much lower than some other builds, but don't count this one out because spamming eruption is a lot of fun if you can make it work. Build number 6 is called the Laser Tank. This is a very similar plasma rifle build to the one I made, except this one has a lot of DR. We're going to use the Tranquil Heart once again, which is clearly a community favorite. Nightweaver's Grudge for 20% crit chance and haste. Hardcore Metal Band to get 5 stacks of Bulwark all the time as we bleed. Probability Cord for more crit damage, with Zany's Malice for more weak spot damage, and Atonement Fold to bleed you and increase crit chance by 10%. This build is crazy good if you have weak spots available to hit. Hunter and Challenger together just plow through bosses, and Plasma Cutter probably has the highest DPS possible, spitting out numbers like their candy. Enigma here deals ridiculous damage, enough to kill Annihilation's orbs in a second, and you can take a hit here and there because, again, you is tank. Now, the one thing to worry about is that this build has half stamina from the Endurance trait, but is also using heavy armor. Actually, a lot of the community builds I've seen have people doing stuff like this where they're not building into stamina that much, and I would highly suggest you don't do this. Stamina really is everything that matters in some of these more aggressive boss fights, but ultimately, you can put out enough damage that this doesn't matter too much. And you can also just move points around a bit if you don't like that like I did. I love the fashion considering the helmet gets you the plasma cutter in the first place and mixing heavy amounts of damage with damage reduction is a recipe for success. And there you have six insane builds from fellow members of the Remnant 2 community. Each provides something unique and has very much fun to try out. If we learned anything today is that everyone is loving the Tranquil Heart. You guys are pros and don't need stamina and there's a ton of cool ways to play this game. If one of these stood out to you as being cool, be sure to comment down below as I imagine the creators would be glad to hear your feedback. Other than that, I hope you continue to try your own build crafting, and I'll catch you next time.